We're here in Las Vegas. We are at Click World 2023. I have the pleasure of being joined by Kevin Hannigan, who's the Chief Learning Officer at Click. Kevin, great to see you. Thanks. So it's an amazing place here. Really looking forward to this as well. Indeed. Yeah. Well, firstly, congratulations on an amazing event. I know it's yeah. a big team effort, but you've certainly played a key role in that. Um, and we've had a great time, and thanks for having us here. Absolutely. Um, so I want to talk about a couple of key things, your, your, your role and your background in particular, the, the challenges around data literacy uh, and, and some of the soft skills on that. But let's just start with a 30,000 foot background on sort of you and your role and the, I guess the remit within Click within yeah. your role as Chief Learning Officer, it, what that it actually is means. It's unique, right? Yeah, so Chief Learning Officer, it, it's around uh, three or four different things, right? So it's about educating our customers um, how to use our product, how to be more data literate, how to use analytics, but also internally, it's, it's upskilling our own employee workforce, using those skills, using the, as we talked, the technology keeps coming and coming, but we still have to be grounded in how do we use it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we work with customers, partners, we work with universities trying to upskill at the academic level. So any given day, it's, it's great, because it's all about learning, but it's, it's about some technology, some soft skills, some business skills, um, and it keeps us busy. Awesome, yeah. and what's the sort of breakup as far as your time goes with regard to what's internal versus customer facing? R roughly 50-50. I oh, mean, well, that makes yeah, it easy. yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, any week is different. Like obviously right. here we're with customers, so it's Indeed. more of a customer <laughs> week. Next week I'll probably do more internally. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it, I mean, from a responsibility point, you, you've got a, a shared remit with regard to what you're doing internally in your own learning, but also supporting your customers in how they're going through that journey. Exactly. Right. Think of like some groups have like a learning and development team under HR. Like that's our internal group, and then customer facing product training. That's the external one. Interesting. Well, to that very point. Uh, you know, the concept of data literacy is, is not necessarily a new one, but it's becoming more clearly defined and you know, obviously we've got a lot more data to deal with. One of the things I see a lot of challenges with is just getting a common vernacular and language yep. with which to actually have this conversation about data, what is data, what types of data I have. Um, I wonder if you could just maybe give us a quick summary around what your views are with regard to the actual importance of data literacy within organizations in general, and then we can sort of talk about where, what Absolutely. state they're at. Uh, first thing I'll say is when, when I say data, I, I, people in the room, they're like, time out, too technical, not me. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you're in the right place because it, it is for you, it's for everyone. And so for me with, with data literacy, the way I think of it, it is you, you're, um, it's almost like reading comprehension with data, right? right? Is you, you have different levels. You, see a chart, you see a data point, and you can observe what it means or what it says, but then you have to apply a critical thing. What is that actually, how do I interpret it? Yep. What does it mean to my business? Is it relevant to my business? And we as consumers do that every day when we're buying things online or whatever, businesses do it. And so to me, data literacy is the process of, of taking that raw data and turning it into wisdom at an organizational scale, um, avoiding things like bias or incorrect assumptions or anything that could go on the way because of the volume and the complexity yep. and so forth. It just drives it. It, it. You know, a couple of years ago, I always say my father, he went to school for the same thing. He went to work, he worked the same technology, retired. It doesn't happen today anymore. Right. You, you, everything's changing. And now with data, numbers, our brains say, it makes sense, let's agree and move yep. on. Yep. It, it doesn't mean it's right. It might be missing something. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like that point you made with regard to when you're having to make a decision, you know, uh, an analogy someone once gave me is that when you're driving down the road, if everyone's not reading the same speed limit the same way and interpreting the right way, then somebody's going to go fast, someone's going to slow, we're going to have accidents. When you're in an organization, whether it's in the boardroom or, or operationally, you know, it's strategic, operational, whatever. If you're not interpreting the data the same way someone else is, it's, you know, it's, it's not like just a pie chart potentially, but exactly. some sort of, you know, whatever it might be presented, if your view or my view are not the same, we're not going to end up the same place. And then issues and risks and other stuff come it about. It happens all the time, like customer churn, right? You might have, sales might have a definition, marketing might, yep. and then services might. One might say it's going up, one might say it's going down. You're in a room, you're never going to agree. You're never going to get that insight, and you're never going to actually improve it because you can't even agree to that common vernacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what, what do you think the general state of data literacy is? I mean, I, I guess predominantly within your customer base because that's the lens you have. Yeah. I mean, overall worldwide, I mean, obviously there's different cultures, different regions, but if you were going to just Poke a stick at it. Where do you think we're at in data literacy? I know there's a lot of work to be done, but are we, are we crawling? Are we walking? Are we running? Are we, we sprinting? We are in that phase. I have four kids, so I can relate to this, where you're <laughs> you're walking, but you fall every two steps. Right. Where okay. It's like it's evolving. So I, I think the good thing is it, it's not just a buzzword anymore. People yeah. realize the importance. They see the value. They run the reports on you know how it helps with productivity. And individuals know it helps you get jobs. Where I think we have work to do is I don't 
I, I think someone can recite the definition. They don't know what it means. Right. What does it mean to work with, to argue, to communicate until they actually get immersed in a problem where they're like, oh my God, why did I think that when yeah. I show them the answer? Yeah. And I'm like, because you didn't use critical thinking. You didn't get different perspectives. That's data literacy. They're like, yeah. oh my God. So th the first step is awareness is great, right? But yeah. it's just awareness. I think we need to do more around educating not only the individuals, but organizations on what it is. It's not just the creators, it's the consumers. Yeah, yeah. Given that we do still have a lot of work, what are some of the key steps you think our audience could consider with regard to your experience and your background as they approach this whole challenge around data literacy? And obviously the first answer is come and talk to you and the team at Click, but what are some of the normal steps you advise customers to go through themselves to sort of go from recognizing that it's not a problem but a requirement, yeah. and then establishing you know, training programs, awareness programs, education yeah. programs, and then put it into an operational step. What are the exactly. sorts of things they should operate? The, the beauty of this is there's different steps, but they can happen in any order. It's not like, right. so you could have a okay. data governance and strategy, and that's fine. And then you might work on education, or you might start with the education, but realize you need to go back to like, a, so at the, at the highest level, you need okay. to trust the data. The, yep. the people creating the data need to trust that it's accurate. The consumers need to trust that it's trustworthy. Yep. And you do that through data management, data security, data governance. Yep. But then beyond that, you need to then educate the workforce that uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is they'll say, I need to be data driven. I'm like, what does that mean? They're like, <laughs> well, it means I don't use my intuition. No, intuition is data. Yep. Intuition yep. is your long-term memory of what happened. Yeah, yeah. If you're in a workforce for 50 years, that's valuable. I'm yep. basically saying, I don't want to use your 50 years experience. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the muscle memory still makes, helps you make the decision. Exactly. You're just getting better information to the muscle memory. Exactly, and, and the reason it has to balance is because of that, but then also, 50 years ago, mental models were different, so we have to right. check it, yep. but we can't just, so when I hear someone say, well, data-driven, I don't want to use intuition, I'm like, okay, we have some work to do. Yeah. But it's combining all this, it's educating that, it's educating the diversity, Trump's ability, so it's okay to be humble and say, I don't know the answer, let me ask my colleague. Um, right. In an organizational culture, sometimes it's hard to say, I don't have the answer, I don't know, and so we have work in the, the cultural realm of how people embracing, not just failure, but embracing collaborative decision making. I right. don't know, right. my boss, uh, you know, will they let me make a decision? It, 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 does it look bad, it's not coming from them. Yep. And, and I think the first thing they can do, right, is, is go to trust, go to education, and just realize that a lot of it is these soft skills. It's, it's not, you don't have to be a data scientist. You don't have yeah, to use, yeah. you know, AutoML or all these things. It's, it's critical thinking. Well, on that point of soft skills, I mean, well, firstly, when you talk about soft skills, what, what are some of the examples of the soft skills that you think organizations would almost get the point where they expect to be there once they establish and train them? Yep, uh, a big one for me is active listening. So right. I always tell this story, I have 12 years of education in reading, 12 years of education in writing, I've never taken a course in listening, but I listen more than I do both of those. Yeah, yeah. So why wouldn't I do that? And what does that mean for us is that means that you might be saying something right now, I'm not listening to you, I'm thinking about how I'm gonna say something else, right. so my brain's not actively listening, yep. I miss your great idea, I go to make a decision, I don't have yep. your great idea, I make a less, so it's, it's, yeah, it's these yeah. skills that go beyond just data literacy, but it's active listening, it's challenging your assumptions. We'll go to organizations, they'll have the greatest data model, great data management, they trust the data, they they ask the right question, they do the right analysis, the decision fails, why does it fail? Is they had an assumption. And that assumption was implicit, it wasn't brought to light. Right, so like right. I always tell my kids when they say, why does the teacher want to see my work? Well, so they know where you went wrong to tell you. Yeah. If you make a decision and you don't show all your assumptions, I can't tell you where your logic yeah, failed. Yeah, yeah, you might um, have just guessed. Yeah, and bias. Now with everything yep. being complex and stuff, we all have confirmation bias. And the challenge I've run into in organizations, it's probably 50-50 people saying, no, that's voodoo, I don't have bias. Nope, it doesn't work for me. So right. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then you have to do some like little tricks and show them that no, this is a bias, yeah, this yeah. is what's happening. Um, there's a couple of times I'll go in a two-day session, the first day I'll wear like a pink shirt and I'll say, no, you all go home. I, you're gonna see more pink shirts. And we come back and they all raise their hands. And I'm like, how many of you think I actually went around and paid everyone to wear a pink shirt? <laughs> and you know, it's, a, it, it's not more, right? I told you your brain it was it. relevant. Yeah. It, that's the brain, it's great, but it's also limited. When we think about the overall challenge of learning in general, um, particularly now that organizations are going through a lot of mergers, you guys have written yep. a book on that. 
one of the things I'm seeing is, is, is a big cultural challenge, and I'm not talking about sort of ethnicity background, I'm talking about corporate culture and behavior. Yep. You know, you've got very large organizations that might have 30, 40, 50, 60 years of culture established, it's hard to break down. You've also got startups. What are you seeing out there with regard to the challenges that they're facing at either end of the spectrum with, you know, legacy environments versus startups around their approach to data literacy and their successes with it? Biggest thing I see is this concept of unlearning. So okay. um, I, I have a learning background. So like when you're a kid, you learn differently because you have no experiences. Right. So they teach you something, it becomes fact. We're adults, we have these years with old systems yep. and old processes. And as soon as we learn something new, what the brain says is time out. I like the old way. Yep, and yep. so unlearning <laughs> is the process of consciously forgetting that, getting it out, and then learning the new thing. But we don't do that. What we do is we just say, here's the next change. Here's right. the next change. And then six months later, we wonder why people didn't adopt it. It's because they didn't unlearn the old one. Right. Um, and, and that's with startups, that's with older companies. It, it really, again, goes back to the brain and adults. We, we have to stop. I know we're moving fast and just say, okay, Let's take some time unlearning these steps, yep. relearn them, let's be very deliberate about it, and you're gonna have a much faster ROI. Yeah, I, in my own experience around this space, particularly in the banking and finance uh, industry, there's a lot of desire to go back to a comfortable space that we know, we thought we know, yep. um, even if it's, we're pretty sure well, it's, it's human right. nature, right? Yeah, it's, right. Yeah, it's in my box. Apathetic, right? Yep. Now, when we talk about this um, with regard to the soft skills, particularly in data literacy, there's often a juggle between technical expertise and data capabilities. How do you balance that? Yep. So at, a, at an organizational level, you complex problems, you need people that can do auto ML, regression, machine learning, yep. but really the power is what do you do with that? How do you interpret it? So I argue and, and hypothesize for data literacy, 90% of it is soft skills. 10% okay. is tech skills. And those 10% are what in America you learn in second grade math. Right. Mean, median, mode. Um, oh, okay. Correlation doesn't equal causation. Uh, beyond that, everything else is critical thinking, active listening, yep. reducing bias. Um, and, and a lot of those soft skills are things that can be taught re relatively easily and yes. quickly and cheaply, right? So there's not a lot of barrier to, to, to entry for that for the people who are being asked to pick it up and not a lot of, I guess, cost barrier to entry to actually teaching that. It's just yeah. getting someone like yourself to help them. Yes and no. There, there isn't a cost barrier. The barrier is we're adults. Right. And some of us don't have a growth mindset. Right, don't and teach you so, to suck eggs. Exactly. Right. Um, but but that's, I'm stereotyping, obviously. But if, if you have the right mindset, right. yes, it's, okay. it's, it's great. And it works beyond just data literacy. Okay. It's a skill you use forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's how you approach it. Well, I wonder if you could wrap us up with a bit of a crystal ball gazing. Uh, there's been an enormous amount of announcements here, so there's a lot of stuff we've probably already heard. Um, you've got a lot of stuff going at the meter anyway with regard to various releases, things, certainly acquisition. Yep. But in your mind and, and your role and, and, and your remit, what do you see over the next 12 to 18 months being things that our audience should probably be thinking about and maybe even ensure they've got on their boardroom agendas to actually start not only just talking about but action and plan for? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing to me is data is everywhere. You're going to be seeing data more, especially here now with all the data integration, data analytics. Just go back and ask yourself, do I trust the data? Do I know what the data is really telling me? And the, and the one that I really get with people is, I, in what situation is what you're thinking not true? And if you come up with four or five reasons why it's not true, great. If you say it's true because the data tells me, we have some work to do. And so I, I see with technology continuing to grow, we're, we're rolling out the products to more and more people, this is just going to become a bigger problem because the right. more people that have access to it need to have this data literacy skill. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's not going to happen instantly, but when you start making a couple less than ideal decisions, then the light bulb's going to turn on. Yeah, data's not going away. No, no. Kevin, awesome advice. Well, uh, the other thing I would like to highlight for our audience is that I often advise people to reach out early. And so I'm going to invite our audience to reach yeah. out to you early, whether it's you individually or a team, follow you on LinkedIn and so forth, but reach out to the team and start a conversation sooner than later. Because I think the longer the organizations leave this to get on top of it and just start getting that vernacular language, the, the, the bigger the challenge is going to be for them. But thank you so much for making time Absolutely. to catch up with me, Kevin. It's been great. Congratulations on an amazing event. Thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks. I appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers.